What's going on guys, my name is Hypnostic and welcome to a brand new MWZ video. In this one we went ahead and completed the Red Worm Easter Egg as a solo player. Now unfortunately it is quite difficult to find a lobby where you're the only person going for it. I've actually fought the worm three times so far and every time I went for it there were a few players there as well. Something very interesting happened during this boss fight and I'm not sure if it was a bug or a glitch but I've never seen anyone wipe the worm as fast as we did here. Before we get into it I quickly want to thank U4GM for sponsoring the video. U4GM is a professional Call of Duty service and they'll help you unlock all the rare schematics including the new classified schematics. They'll even help you unlock the Borealis Mastery Camo. If you guys are interested in this, then click the link in the description below and use my code HIP for 5% off. So, if you're interested in taking out the Red Worm yourself as a solo player or as a team, then this is a setup I recommend using. We brought the Akimbo Wasp Swarms as I believe that this is the best weapon to use against the Worm due to the high fire rate, damage output, and the insane amount of ammo. The attachments I'd recommend using are as follows. The Akimbo Brace Stock Conversion Kit so you can akimbo these bad boys. The .G3P04 Laser for better hipfire accuracy. The Wasp Reckless 90 Long Barrel for increased damage range. The S37C DL Breacher Device S Muzzle for increased hipfire accuracy. And of course the 100 round drum mag attachment so we effectively have 400 rounds once pack-a-punched. In terms of the items I'd recommend bringing along, we've got the Aether Blade which is recommended but not necessary. A flawless Ethereum Crystal just so we can get our weapon to pack-a-punch tier 3 right away. The Golden Armor Plates just so we don't have to worry too much about armor during the fight, a legendary aether tool so we can upgrade our weapon to legendary tier for the increased damage output, and then I'd recommend filling up the rest of your bag with perks, I opted for juggernaut, phd flopper, death perception, speed cola, and stamina. However, we'll be getting all the remaining perks during the game anyways. For our tactical equipment, I'd recommend using the experimental gas, it did get nerfed with the last update but it's still very effective, since we have the aether blade we won't be bringing in any lethal, but for those of you who don't have it unlocked yet, I'd recommend bringing either throwing knives or a Semtex. And for your field upgrade, use energy mine as it regenerates very fast and helps clear out all the zombies that spawn during the boss fight. You're definitely going to want to use an operator that has a large bag so you can bring the most important stuff with you. A sentry gun helps out as well just to clear out some of the zombies during the boss fight. A three plate vest is recommended. A durable mask is pretty much necessary as we'll be fighting the Red Worm in the Aether Storm and of course the Self Revive. If you don't have a fully geared operator then I definitely advise you to get one fully geared up before infilling to fight the boss. Once you've got everything, it's time to infill. Now that we've arrived in Urzikstan, I'd recommend opening up your map and looking where the Aether Storm is located. There are four spawn points for the Red Worm as you can see on this map on screen right now. Just look for which one of these locations has two ammo depots near each other. If the spawn point is too far from the Aether Storm then I'd recommend expelling and coming back in. If you've got the boss spawn point relatively close to the storm like we did this game then you're all set. We now need to collect four USB keys. There are 12 locations where they can potentially spawn and it's completely random every time you infill. To find out where they're located you'll have to head to one of these four buildings as marked on the map on screen. Inside these buildings you'll find pictures of the exact location. If you've got bad memory or you've just had a bit too much of that good stuff then just take a quick picture with your phone or something. Now that you know the location of all four USB keys it's time to head over to all four locations to collect the USB keys required to start the boss fight. When you get to one of the locations, you'll see these communication computers that you can interact with. When you've interacted with them, they'll spit out the USB keys which you'll want to pick up and keep in your inventory until later during the game. Once you've obtained all four USB keys, it's time to earn some essence to continue preparing for the boss fight. 
I'd recommend doing some tier 2 deliver cargo and bounty contracts. If you have a deliver cargo contract available in the tier 3 zone, then go ahead and do that as well for some quick and easy essence. While you're at it, you might even come across a player pleading for help like I did, so just, you know, go ahead and help them out. You know, spread the word. The goal here is to buy all the remaining perks and a few self revives. I ended up buying a total of 4 self revives just in case things end up going south. Once you've got a couple self revives, all the perks and anything else you were missing, it's time to head over to the boss fight location. Once you're there, you'll have to wait for the Aether Storm to start moving in order to interact with the refractors. There's a total of 4 refractors you'll need to interact with and each of them will use one of your USB keys. So once the Aether Storm spreads and goes over the refractors, you can interact with all 4 of them. Once you've interacted with the final refractor, you'll have a bunch of zombies spawning and after some time has passed, the red worm will spawn. If your gas mask is about to break, be sure to hit the ammo depot as that will actually restore your mask. Anyways guys, that's gonna be it for the setup and guide. I'll now swap over to the live commentary of me actually fighting the red worm and you'll see what happened. I really hope this video was helpful to you, if it was then please be sure to hit that like button, comment with any suggestions for future videos, and subscribe to show your support to the channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night wherever in the world you are, and enjoy the quote unquote hardest boss fight. Goodbye. So we got all four refractors ready. Now we just gotta wait for the boss to spawn in, just kinda get used to running around. So similarly to the no signal fight, um, it's gonna shoot that laser so you wanna keep moving. Just so that that thing doesn't hit you, when it pulls you in, spam that jump button. So once it spits you out, you don't die to fall damage, you actually open up your parachute and you land safely. And uh, yeah, pretty sure that's kind of it for mechanics the orbs that it shoots at you as well make sure to focus on those because they will heal the worm and uh yeah we're ready for it let's drop the sentry see if we can get a thumbnail here should spawn any second now um let's equip that let's go ahead and inspect can we get it let's go perfect timing all right let's start lighting this thing up let's go all right keep moving let's throw this thing down as well Kill five aether worm. Hold on. Dude, that's a death animation. Okay. Okay. And that's supposed to be the hardest fight, huh? Flawless Ethereum diagram and the Wonder Waffle. Let's go. Hell yeah, dude. It's good loot, but it's kind of a shame that the boss fight's bugged right now. I swear, I thought this was gonna be harder. Isn't this supposed to be the hardest boss fight or something? Oh uh, man, no way. That kind of sucks. But you know, it's it's good for getting loot or, you know, for the casual player who doesn't want to sweat it, you know? Alright, there we go. GG's. I'm out.